Hello and welcome to this new episode of FST. First, why this video? Well, after I posted my last video on the pseudoscience of alkaline kangen water, I got many comments, emails and messages about, and I was also surprised by it, the pyramid scheme part of the last video. Many of the viewers even emailed and messaged me about why these preposterous pyramid schemes still thrive despite their shortcomings. So I decided to make this video. This is going to be a two-parter. The first part will talk about the logical reasons, the mathematical reasons of why investing in a pyramid scheme is a really bad idea. In the next video, part two, we'll talk about the emotional, the right brain, psychological reasons of why people still fall for these pyramid schemes. But in this part, part one, we'll talk about the logical, mathematical case for why pyramid schemes are a very bad investment idea and why it's almost impossible for the average Joe to make any money out of these pyramid schemes. So without further ado, let's get started. Pyramid schemes are so named because of the hierarchical structure that is formed by their members. These schemes usually start with initiators recruiting a number of members who are then expected to recruit the same number of new members to receive the expected monetary returns. At each level, members make payments to the ones above them called uplines or uplinks and receive payments from those below them called downlinks or downlines. The money flows from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid. Now, almost every pyramid scheme has a product to sell to the new members, but selling the product is not the source of the main revenue stream. The main means of revenue generation and hence profit making is the continuation of recruitment of new members. Pyramid companies make virtually all their profits from signing up new recruits and often attempt to disguise entry fees as the price charged for training, demo kits, or product inventory. In reality, it doesn't matter if a product is sold or not sold. All that matters and is of utmost importance is the continuous induction of new recruits. But this is a very important factor. And this factor alone is the sole reason why these pyramid schemes ultimately fail. On the surface, a pyramid scheme looks just like any other business opportunity because you're told the rules of the game are simple and fair. Work hard, make more members, help those that you made members to make more members, and finally, reap the fruit of your hard work and keep collecting money for eternity. Sounds simple and fair, but the reality is most people who join the pyramid schemes end up worse off in terms of their financial return of investment. Why? You see, this simple mathematical fact called exponential growth factor comes in the way of all members getting as rich as they are told by the uplines when they join the pyramid scheme. So let's get into what this exponential growth factor is and how it makes sure that every pyramid scheme is ultimately doomed to fail. For the investment design of a pyramid scheme to work, the number of new members at each successive layer or level must increase exponentially. What does that mean? So basically, let's say you go and join a pyramid scheme and they tell you, you just have to add six new members. But in reality, for the pyramid scheme to be a successful investment option, the number of new members at each level must multiply. They would never tell you that. The number must multiply and not add. So for example, let's imagine you join a pyramid scheme and you are told you have to recruit six new investors or members into this pyramid scheme. Let's go to level one. There's only one person because that's the person who starts the scheme, isn't it? Now, how many people does he need to recruit? He needs to recruit six people. So the second layer would have six people. Now, let's move to the third layer, the third level of the pyramid scheme. Well, that would be six members in the second layer and each member must recruit six more people. So the third layer will be six times six, 36 new members. Now, let's move on to the fourth level. The fourth layer will have 36 times six is 216. That's the size of a small hamlet, but still doable. Now, let's move on to the fifth layer, 216 times six, and that would be 1,296 new recruits. Assuming one person joins the scheme, 
from each house of the town. So 1,300-ish households is the size of a small town. Let's move on to level 6. The scheme would need to have 1,296 times 6 each. So that would be 7,776 new members. Now, taking into account that around the world, the average family size is about 5 members for each family. And realistically assuming that one person will join the pyramid scheme from one family, we can say with confidence that at the sixth level, we need 7,776 new members and that can only be sustained by a population of 7,776 times 5. So 5 is the global average size of family. And that would be a whopping 38,880 people. That's the size of a pretty big town. Let's move on to the seventh level. How many people do you need? About 46,656 new members. And that means a population of 46,656 times 5 equals 233,280 people. Think about it for a second. You need a population the size of an entire, let's say, borough of Islington, or the entire district of Rewari, Haryana in India, or the entire city of Richmond, the capital of Virginia, USA. And that's mind-blowing, isn't it? Moving on to 8th level, you would need 279,936 new members. That would mean you need a population of about 1.4 million people, 1,399,680 to be exact. Just so you can visualize the scale, you'd need a city the size of Dallas or San Diego in USA. There are only 370 cities in the whole world that have a population of more than 1.4 million people. But the proponents of pyramid schemes can argue, an uphill task no doubt, but logically still doable. Fair enough. Now, just to recruit enough people at level 9, you would need 1,679,616 new people to join the pyramid. This population of 1.679 million needs to have 8.398 million people. In other words, you'd need the population of an entire small country such as Hong Kong, Scotland, Singapore, etc. Just imagine each family in Singapore or Scotland or Hong Kong has one member each who has joined this pyramid scheme. It sounds very, very impractical that this would happen. But logically, it's still possible, isn't it? Now, let's move on to the 10th level. You need 10,077,696 new people to be exact. So that would be a population of 10,077,696 times 5 equals 50,388,480 people. Can you imagine the scale at this level? Only 28 countries in the world have populations bigger than this number. Now, let's move on to level 11. You would need 60,466,176 new members. And the population you need to support this number of new members would be a whopping 302,330,880 people. Only three countries in the world have populations bigger than this. And they are United States of America, China, and India. Now, let's move on to level 12. By level 12, you would need 362,797,056 new people to join this pyramid. Going by this formula of five members in each family, you would need 1.8 billion people to sustain this population of new members at level 12. But now let's see what happens at level 13. At level 13, something strange happens because you would need at least 2,176,782,336 new people to join the pyramid. And going by our five members per household number, these 2 billion plus new members need a population of more than 10 billion people. But there's a problem. The problem is there are only 8 billion people on Earth. So even level 13 alone cannot be sustained because we simply have run out of people on our entire planet. So level 13 is not possible. Beyond level 12, you'll simply run out of people to just recruit at level 13. So that's where the simple mathematics of exponential growth factor 
makes this whole pyramid unsustainable. If you want to understand this amazing math of exponential growth a bit more, you can watch my video on exponential growth. I provided the link in the description below. Now, let's see who gains and who loses in the pyramid system. In our example, at the bottom level of our pyramid, there are 362,797,056 people. Above them, all levels combined have 72,559,421 members. So what does that mean? Basically, what that means is that 84% of the total people in the pyramid would never make any money. They'd only pay in into the pyramid scheme, but they will not get any money back. So on average, all of them will end up losing their investment, losing their membership fees, losing their money. Okay, so that was level 12. Now let's look at level 11. All the members at level 11 will only get their money back, their investment back on average. Because on average, each member makes six new members. So of course they would get their money back, but they'll not be able to make any profits, make any money out of it. So level 11 and 12 would never make any money whatsoever in the pyramid scheme. They would only end up giving their money and sending it up. If you combine the members at level 11 and level 12 who end up not making any money whatsoever, that's 97.2% of the total pool of all the investors, all the members of the pyramid. Think about it for a second. 97.2% of the members will never see a single penny in their pocket. Only 2.8% of the total members in the pyramid scheme will end up making some money. But realistically speaking, during the research of this video, I personally talked with some people who had been victims of these pyramid schemes in the past. What I came to know is that only the top six levels would end up making majority of the money. How many people would that be? In total, that comes to a trifling 0.0021%. That's a terribly bad ratio of wealth sharing. In total, 99.998% of all investors, all members of the pyramid scheme would end up with a very unsatisfactory outcome in terms of financial return on investment. And that's the thing. Your uplink or upline or up whatever will never explain to you these risk factors. And that not telling, that deception is what makes these pyramid schemes morally wrong and in some places illegal. So in this episode, we just finished talking about the logical reason why you should not join a pyramid scheme. In our next episode, we'll have a deeper look into the psychological, emotional, and behavioral aspect of pyramid schemes. So that was our video for today. If you liked what you saw, please press the like button and share with your friends and family. And if you really liked it, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.